They even pretended to fight over this. Like all of these secret society people do. It's called the Hegelian dialectic. We want all these people to do something. So you and I are going to get together. We're going to create two different causes. We're going to get all these people wrapped up in it. We're going to pretend to fight against each other. And this fight is going to bring about the conclusion that we really wanted in the first place. And they're all going to think that it was done accidentally by them, and we didn't have anything to do with it. How many of you understand the concept of Hegelian dialectic of manipulation of political resolutions? Mm -hmm. If you don't, you'd better read Hegel, and you'd better study it, because that's what's happening. That's what the abortion issue is all about. Can government decide the abortion issue? Can you decide it with laws? If you could, everybody would obey the law, there wouldn't be any issue, would there? The Supreme Court has already made the law, haven't they? Thank you. I've been saying that for 20 years. It's the truth. The whole issue is designed to create a conflict which cannot be solved except by some world body. What do you think the ozone holes are about? How many of you understand the ozone holes? How many of you don't? Okay, it's about time somebody explained it to you. Because this is one of the biggest cons going. And what's it designed to do? Create a conflict between people who need to pollute the atmosphere and people who don't want it polluted to present the prevent the depletion of the ozone layer so that we're all not fried by the sun's rays coming from the great Apollo up there riding across the sky in his chariot. And by the way, if you want confirmation of what I said about the Founding Fathers, if you really believe that they were Christian, go look at the city that they laid out from the air. Look at the symbolism that they built into it, all deist all Masonic, all Jacobin. It's another word for Jacobin, Illuminist, Illuminati. Go into the Capitol building, stand right in the center of the rotunda and look straight up at the dome where nobody ever looks. And what do you see? You see the apotheosis of George Washington. Riding across the heavens in the chariot of Apollo. Who is Apollo? George Washington. He's become God now. And around the perimeter of the Capitol Dome, you see all the old gods of the Roman pantheon. They're all there. Zeus, Mercury, Prometheus, all of them. What's that doing on the inside of our Capitol Dome if this country is a Christian nation? Can you tell me that? No. And you never will be able to in a million years unless you turn around and admit the truth. The truth is, is it never was, never was intended to be. The people in government for many years have been Christian. Are they now? Most of the people in our government now are not Christian, and that's part of the problem today. They have no morals, no ethical standards of behavior. And therefore anything goes. They are a pack of pathetic, chronic liars which is the sign of a socialist every single time. Socialism believes in what? The supremacy of the mind of man, not in God. Anytime man has supremacy over everything, everything becomes what? Subjective. Subject if you're God, how can you do something wrong? And that's the whole problem with this crowd now. They don't have anybody to answer to. You see, whether you believe in God or not, the human race must have God. They must have a superior power to which they must answer. If they do not, then everything becomes subjective. And if I want to slice your head in half, by God, there's nothing wrong with me doing it because I'm God. You understand that? That's really what's wrong. When man has nothing or no one to answer to, man can do no wrong, can he?
Okay, here's the problem with the ozone hole thing. How many of you have noticed that every time they show a picture of an ozone hole, it's always over or near one of the poles? How many of you have noticed that? Every time. Because it has to be. It's the only place it occurs, and it's not really a hole at all. And it has nothing to do with what we do. It has nothing to do with CFCs or anything else that we do here on this earth, period. Because here's the truth of it. How many of you have also noticed that whenever that hole occurs, it occurs at that particular pole in the wintertime? Why is that? Well, the earth is tilted on its axis. So if this is the north pole up here, we have the earth right here, and we have old Saul over here giving out his rays. What has to happen to form ozone, folks? Sunlight must interact with gases in the atmosphere. Which gas? Oxygen. When sunlight strikes oxygen in the atmosphere, it causes a chemical reaction which splits O2 into two single O's. So O2 becomes, what is that? Ozone. ozone. Each one of these is ozone. But what is it also? It's what's called a free radical. It doesn't like to be in that position. It doesn't like to be unattached. Okay? That's something like people I know. Can't be without a mate for 10 seconds. And so they always choose the wrong one, which ensures that they're going to break up and they can't be without a mate for 10 seconds. <coughs> Believe it or not, most of us go through that little period. We think we have to be with somebody all the time. Not true. Okay. These, because they're free radicals, they don't like that state of being, don't last very long. As soon as they find something to latch onto that they can oxidize, they will. Or as soon as they can find another free radical of oxygen, they will form once again O2. Or if they can find another radical of oxygen and an atom of hydrogen, they will form water. They don't like being apart. So ozone doesn't exist very long after it's created anyway. It's in a constant state of creation and attaching itself to something else and disappearing. So ozone is in a constant state of flux, becoming and unbecoming all the time. And it's caused by the sun rays interacting with oxygen in the atmosphere. What do we call that layer? There is no such thing as an ozone layer. What is it called? Because what are these? These are ions. Ozone is an ion of oxygen. Okay? It's called the ionosphere. So why don't these freako environmentalist liars call it what it is, the ionosphere? Because it would be the truth, and we can all prove that the ionosphere is not disappearing. It's where ionization of gases takes place due to interaction with the sun's rays, energy from the sun. Everybody understand that? So instead they say, there's an ozone layer. Oh, really? Hmm, can you taste it? Can you touch it? Can you feel it? <laughs> it's the ionosphere. And this whole thing is a hoax. Because here's what happens. As sun streams toward the earth, you can see down here at the south pole where they're having summer, sun's rays are hitting all over the pole, aren't they? But up here, they're not hitting a portion of the pole. At the pole that is experiencing winter, what do they have there that's unusual about the rest of the earth? They have six months of darkness. There's six months when the sun's rays are not hitting that part of the earth or the earth's atmosphere. 
And so there is no interaction between the sun's rays and the oxygen in the atmosphere. And so what is absent? Ozone. Is it a depletion of ozone? No, it's just a place where the chemical reaction does not take place. It is absolutely perfectly normal. And when the Earth moves around to the other side of the sun, and the southern hemisphere is then experiencing winter because the sun is then over here, the hole jumps magically from the North Pole to the South Pole. And all of the CFCs that we are leaking and using on the face of this earth have magically migrated to one spot over the pole where nobody's leaking anything and depletes all the ozone right there. You see, if this was really true, where would the holes be? Los Angeles, London, Tokyo, there's a biggie. Phoenix, right? Do you know that the state of Arizona is the only state in the whole 40, or whole 50 United States that knows this <laughs> and has passed a law saying, screw you, we know there's no ozone holes, we'll use CFCs all we want, and we do. <laughs> we educated our legislators, not to the fact that, if they, that, that, that this was a, a hoax, we did that, of course. But even though they knew it was a hoax, they didn't want to go along with it until we put pressure on them saying, hey, we're not going to support this scam, period. This is a scam, and you know it is. We put political pressure on them that they were going to lose their jobs unless they did what we wanted them to do. And so they did. Now, we don't always get our way in Arizona, because why do you think it's called Phoenix? and the valley of the sun and the sun devils that's all out of the mysteries Phoenix is a Masonic city if there ever was one on the face of this earth <laughs> no nope. Phoenix is a symbol Phoenix is the symbol of resurrection death and resurrection Phoenix is the bird that rose up out of the ashes yes sir why the hoax? What is the end result of the hoax? What do you have to have to solve this problem? World government control of the atmosphere. You see, they do it by stages. Give them the atmosphere. What do they want next? The biosphere, maybe? How many of you know about the biosphere? You know the UN inspectors were just at Yellowstone National Park and determined that there has to be a buffer zone around the park. So the National Park Service is buying up private land and kicking people up off their land and closing roads to make this buffer zone which will be absolutely off limits to any human habitation, occupation or use forever to protect the environment within the park. Do you know that this is just one little step toward seizing all of the wild lands, wildlife, natural resources, metals, and minerals up on the earth under the control of a one world government? Did you know that it's all been outlined in treaties for years? So why aren't you upset about it? What are you doing about it? Ah. What are you upset about it? I am. What are you doing about it? Silence. <laughs> Who's, we invited the Chinese communists to come set up house. Yeah, but you see, these are all symptoms of things. It's the symptom that we're being controlled by some very, very smart manipulators who understand how to make us do their bidding, even though we may not want to. How many people are here? How many people should be here? Okay. How many people cares versus how many people don't care? And the degree of care is not whether they really care or not, it's whether they perceive that there's a problem and that will tell you how effective the masters in control have been in brainwashing the population. They don't perceive that there's a problem. 
If they did, they would be here, wouldn't they? 